Guys. How you doing? Good. Is everyone ready to shake the holidays off? Yeah. Awesome. So just a little follow-up question from last week. Who went to the gym this week, this last week? Who did some of that? Oh, there's a lot more hands up. That's a good thing. I like that. Did anyone read any good books? Did anyone put something new in their head? Raise your hand if you did some of that. I like that. That's, that's positive habits right there. Have any of you more intelligently been approaching your core relationships and have been feeding them so that they are good to you as well? Who's been doing some of that? Do give yourselves a big round of applause. That's awesome. Really makes a difference. So it's the first real week of the year, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, last week was retreat. There was some in and out, blah, 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 getting a bunch of new cubes set up. Uh, but I really feel like this is a great week to just to launch and to go. And so I was, I was talking to our leadership team and asking, man, what would be the most useful conversation that we could have? And I want to kick it off with um, reverse engineering success. When you think of who some of your heroes are, the people that you take advice from, the people that you look to, drop some names. Who are some of the people in the public where you're like, oh, I can always go to that person for a fresh idea or inspiration or that person motivates me. Who are some of the people out there that you look to? Well, thank you. Fine. <laughs> Suck up. Okay. Aside, aside from Chris Crone, right? First name that comes to my head is my dad. Okay. So you look to your father. Yeah. Does your father, what does he inspire you to do? Um, he inspires me to get out of myself, to serve others, um, to work hard, to stick to a schedule, a regimen, and just to always be better every day. But the main thing is to service. I would say service. Service and consistency. How cool, guys. Give it up for him to have a dad that can provide that for you. It's very, very cool. I love that. Who else do you look to? Who are you learning from? We got Elijah's got his hand up here. Go ahead, Elijah. Yeah, so another influencer actually I really, really like is Alex Hormozzi. Yeah. Uh, he wrote, wrote a couple books. He just, I love his Instagram content. He's got very significant content to you where he just drops massive valuable nuggets. Um, and just quick little blurbs about sales techniques and business ideas and stuff that even necessarily helps me right now, but just makes me start thinking for the future. I love really it. really like his different nugget stuff. Yeah, Hermosi's a good dude. He and I, we text back and forth and we exchange ideas. I made a video on my channel of one of his things a couple weeks ago. He's a good guy, I like it. He is fresh, he does drop the gold nuggets and he does think outside of the box. Who else do you guys look to? Uh, Chris Rude. Chris Rude, yeah. what do you like about him? Um, I like that he's just real. He, there, he doesn't hide anything and he talks about real life stuff, how everything around you affects what you do outside. Yeah. Um, and just building wealth and establishing relationships that last forever. Allies is a big thing. Very, very cool. We, we can make a list of the people that you look to, the people that you learn from. And my guess if they're relatively noteworthy because of the success they've had, here's the crazy part. People love dialing into them and saying, what's your strategy? Tell me how you did it and I wanna mimic what you did. But I wanna go 50,000 feet above that and I wanna share something different, a different principle that all of them share in common because they all succeed in different ways, right? You could find someone that is a masterful relationship coach or Tony Robbins, who's a really great business coach or Elon Musk, who in the business field, he definitely leads a group of entrepreneurs forward and how to think differently. We have all these thought leaders, Simon Sinek in the game of leadership. And we watch these people and we do it because they give us ideas and then we try to copy some of their ideas and we hope that their ideas will create results for us that they get in their life. Raise your hand if you agree with that sentiment, yeah? But I wanna share with you something different I see. When I look through the lens of the matrix and I see all the weird green symbols falling, I'm like, what's the real pattern? And I'm gonna tell you right now what it is. They consistently have a higher quantity of good habits than most people. They have a higher consistency of good habits than most people. For example, Joe Rogan. Anyone watch Joe Rogan? Do you guys know that Joe Rogan, he works out regularly, he's cold plunging. He has an entire regimen of what he does and coincidentally, he's one of the most popular, largest podcast thought leaders in the world, right? The, the biggest names get on his podcast. That's really what he's known for. And it's like, how did he attract those kind of people? 
And it always comes down to what you're doing in the dark, meaning not nine to five. There's a, there's a commercial, you've probably seen it uh, with Michael Phelps. And uh, they played it during one of the previous Olympics. And it, it's this really motivating commercial that shows his alarm waking up at like three in the morning, getting to the pool. He's swimming morning, you know, afternoon, late night. And basically when people aren't watching is when he's getting stronger. And it ends with this really cool slogan that it's, it's what you do in the dark that determines who you are in the day, something like that. And that's the principle because most positive habits are not expressed during the light. They're not expressed during the nine to five. It's what you're doing in your personal life when no one's looking. And so if you want to beast yourself into a next level human being, don't look to these influence for, for strategies alone. Instead, ask how many good habits am I consistently doing no matter what? And what I want you to do right now, because I see so many of you are taking notes and I love that because if you write it down, you're more likely to remember. If you teach it, you're going to own it. And so as it went, here's some things I'd invite you to write down right now. Make a, make a list of every positive habit that you can count on yourself to do every single day. And you might write down there, you know, some of my favorites that I'm, I'm always telling people, I, sh I, I hate shitting on people except when I feel like it's important enough. And here are my shoulds. You should be getting no less than 20 minutes a day of someone else's best content in your brain. That habit determines whether you are hoping for better results operating on yesterday's thought processes or whether you actually have the possibility of producing more. And everyone in this room hopefully wants more. Like you're driven, this particular career is driven by more. And who is more rewarded to? Oh, it's gotta be the hardest worker. Not necessarily. It's the one who gets better. And you can't get better unless you put something new in. And so there's gotta be a formula for you of how you do that. And there's two that come to mind for me. And the first one is I gotta be reading something relevant that makes me a better human being. And no, I'm not talking about sales books. Cause yeah, you could read a book on how to overcome objections, you know, for the millennial and for the Gen Zers that are coming up. Like, how do you talk to them? That's useful. There's some pragmatic, useful information there. But I'm also talking about what are you reading that literally makes you smarter, more capable, better, um, more passionate, more driven by the things that you want, right? Like for example, flying, that's your thing. You love that, right? If you pursue that and it makes you happy, you will probably perform better here. So my question is, what are you pushing yourself to excel in and learn that tells you, I know every day I'm becoming a better human being because I'm putting good stuff in here. You will behave different on the phone. Stagnation is what kills your six week average. So what is your process? The other way of doing that literally is for me when I was on the phones, which is how my entire career got started, is I made sure a day didn't end unless I asked five of the best people how they said something and then I would write it down verbatim after hearing it and then I would just copy it until I could make it my own. And I got really good. You put me on the phone with any human being, I'm freaking gonna slay it. But I'm really just an amalgamation, machine learning if you will, of thousands of other people's really great approaches. That is another way to actually technically get better. So that's one of the shits I'll put on you is, what are you doing to get smarter every day on something that you can implement? Here's the second one. I'm gonna shit on you in the morning that you should go to the gym. Yes or yes? Yes. yes. You gotta do something to move your body and wake it up because if you don't wake up your body, you're gonna be lethargic through the entire day. Raise your hand if you know this is true. And um, I gave this training last week and Denise came up and he's like, but Chris, what if I really like doing the gym in the evening? And I'm like, cool. Wait till the end of the day to harness your best energy and go to sleep. So if that's when you want to fit it in, that's when you fit it in. I think it's a horrible idea because the byproduct of working out isn't what you get while you work out, it's what happens after. Two hours after the gym, energy spikes and sustains. By the way, how many of you want more energy? Because I was in this retreat in Mexico and we invited the spouses and Tim Weeks was there and his wife Hillary's like, where do you get all this energy? <laughs> And I said, wake up early, go to the gym. You'll, you'll have more energy throughout the day. I'm gonna shit on you. I think everyone, I think if you're in sales, period, you like become a part of that tribe the, because some of, the, some of your biggest, most successful people there, they're, they're busting their butt at the gym. By the way, 
when you gym, whatever that means for you, joyful movement or whatever that movement is, do whatever you want, but you better have a way to measure it and know that you're better today than yesterday. I lost a decade at the gym because I was mistaking movement for achievement. Going to a gym and pushing stuff and not writing down what you're doing with no way to measure whether you're actually doing more the next time is a pure waste of life. Like don't waste your life. Go to the gym and write down, track. There's apps, you can handwrite it. Track that stuff and prove that you're actually getting better and you're actually getting stronger. And then the third habit that I talked about last week is if you're in a committed, loving relationship with another human being, raise your hand if you're in a committed, loving relationship with another human being. You should see every hand up because that committed, loving human being is who? Yourself. It's yourself. So what are you doing to feed the soul? What are you doing to make sure that you love your life? Because no one can make you happy. Happy is a choice. Happy is something you do, so what is it that you do? For me, a gym is part of that. For me, getting new knowledge is a part of that, but there may be other things as well. And then of course, if there is that significant other person in your life, what are you doing everyday trackable so that you can walk out of that relationship knowing that you're a 10 out of 10 all-star? Because if you want an all-star relationship, if you want to become a power couple, you never wait for your spouse, your significant other. You always put it on you to make sure that you're showing up 10 out of 10, and then that's called leading by example. Leading by what? Example. Yeah. Those are just three habits. What are some of the other habits you're writing down that you do to get yourself in a peak state so when it's time to freaking perform, you are game on all day long? What do you do? I finish every shower cold. You, you take cold showers. That is mental training of strength. Prayer. Okay, prayer, powerful, love that one, big part of my world. My meal prep is always done by Sunday evening. <laughs> yeah, meal prep is done. By the way, if you eat crap, you will feel like Crap. Yeah, and so it's a lot easier. I mean, it's, it's weird. This generation, we have nothing but, I won't even get into the whole what's wrong with our food system, but it's all wrong. So yeah, doing like putting good in helps you definitely get good out. What else? There was a couple more hands. Connect with people who pump you up. Okay, so putting people in your world, they get you jazzed and pumped up and ready to go. Super awesome. Any others? Meditation. Meditation. Getting yourself grounded in state calm, peaceful, yep. getting totally in control of your life. I throw a breakthrough in there for me. Breakthrough a day keeps the negativity away. Negativity is the number one killer of numbers on your six week average for sure. Sorry, this might be a weird one, but it's stuck with me for a very long time. Make my bed in the morning. Just that I found that successful people make their bed in their morning. And so I just make it a thing that I make my bed in the morning. Get organized. Say that you actually take ownership and responsibility and respect the things that you have in your world. I got home late last night. First thing I did is I fully unpacked because this morning I repacked because I think this afternoon I'm going to Mexico for a quick little hunt. No, no, we're not. But I had to have everything put away so that I knew where all my crap was so I could be organized. You guys, this is the cool thing. You get to pick the what yours are. Here's the point for today. If you look at your list and you're like, honest, 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 I only have three positive habits, but I know that I do them no matter what. And that's my number. Then here's what I would do. Q1 this year, right now, the next 90 days, add a fourth. That's a 25% increase and sustain it for all 90 days. And when you're tempted to not do it, just remember, that if you don't do it, you're training yourself to be lazy and weak and you should just do it. Because if you can sustain four, then what can you do next quarter? You can add a fifth. I'm telling you that your success in life will actually correlate to the number of positive habits. This is true probably 98% of the time. There's always gonna be weird flukes. The weird flukes are the, are the people who get lucky because you could literally win the lotto and you could chalk that up as getting lucky. You can have a brilliant business idea and have it take off and do really well. And if you can't do that consistently every single time, you got lucky. Like luck is a part of life, but for the 98% of us, when we succeed, it is a byproduct of consistently doing a certain number of habits. I have 28 things that I do every single day without fail. And this quarter, I'm gonna add a 29th because I really believe that the byproduct of maximum success comes down to how many positive good habits can you do? Because when we ask what kind of value person you are, what kind of quality human being you are, at the end of the day, it comes down, I believe, to the number of good habits that you can keep juggling, never drop, no matter what. So ask yourself this quarter, what, what's one thing that you wanna add not two things, by the way, not five things, not 12 things. What's one thing you want to add to become a person of greater value? Because remember, it's what you do in the dark.
It's not what you do at work. One thing, and I'd get clear on it right now and I'd write it down and I'd make this commitment. I would make it measurable so you know every day if you did or didn't do it. It can't be filled with adjectives. It's filled with numbers and data. That's measurable, not adjectives. I'm gonna make better choices is a good example of a dumb idea, right? The good choice I'm gonna make is, and this is what, when I know that I'll achieve it, for example, um, I have a new meal plan and I'm going, to, I'm going to do that Monday through Friday and take the weekends off. Or I'm gonna do it Monday through Saturday and I take Sunday off. That's measurable. You know whether you did and you know whether you didn't. Make sense? Yeah. Just add one thing. How many things? One. Now, once you have it down and you're doing it, look forward to the moment when you can honestly add your next one without dropping the, the previous one. Because I'm at 28, and I think that when people, when people look at me, they're like, dude, Chris, we follow you. Watch this. We follow you because you have great results. I follow you because I saw you on a private jet. I follow you because I look at the house you live in. I follow you because of the things that you buy. Or I follow you because of the size of your portfolio. I follow you because of the size of your social media. I follow you for some reason. And because of that, their next move is to say, what's his strategy? What does he do? Oh, he's the real estate dude. I'm like, I'm not the real estate guy. He's the real estate dude. Just buy real estate and then you'll have what Chris Crone has. The real secret is that I believe my success comes down to the number of habits that I can successfully sustain and have a system for adding them. So the goal is to have as many positive habits as well. And if you really did a non-cursory deep dive, into why I have the results that I do, it will come down to the small, consistent things like making my bed, the small, consistent things I do no matter what, every day. And that's why people want to connect with me and jam with me. By the way, all those things collectively, do they add energy or take away energy? Do they bring passion or rob passion? Do they make you happy or depressed? Do they make it easier to stand tall and full? versus this whole slumped over high, I can't fog a mirror. Like all of that energy that attracts so many people is really just an expression of all my positive habits that I do consistently no matter what. So pick up a positive habit. Now, with that being said, let's talk about during the day nine to five positive habits that will determine your success here as well. You are all in a journey of becoming talented, more talented, yes or yes? Yes. Because how many of you know that if you talk to a challenging lead type, a person that you don't like, if you possess the proper talents, you could potentially make that a really great call. How many of you know this? In fact, if we look at the greatest challenge of this, we are all prejudicing people. Oh, I don't believe young people have money. I'm scared to talk to women that make over $100,000 a year. I'm really nervous when I talk to this type of individual. I've already prejudged that type of nationality. We, we have all of these weak rules because we've been on the phone, we talked to these people and we quickly put them in a box and we're like, and what you're really saying is I'm not talented enough to talk to that kind of human being or it's not gonna be worth it in the end. But if you look at the people that are crazy successful, they know how to talk to successfully more different types of individuals. They can talk to any demographic, any age, any level of financial ability. Like here's a common one, when you're new to sales, when you talk to someone that makes less than $50,000 a year, you feel pretty comfortable. When you talk to someone that's making over a million dollars a year, what happens to your personal confidence? Hmm. It goes down. And this is personal weakness. This has, you're playing a hierarchy game and you basically determine that this person is better than you. What value could you possibly give them? And the secret is you're not giving them value. I'm giving them value. Your job is to represent me. And do you think I'm going to cower because someone makes a million dollars a year? No. no, it just means that they're probably a better fit for a higher level program. I get more excited, right? Mm -hmm. So during the day, the habit that you're really looking for is we measure it in your critical drivers a couple of different ways. The first one is... To have a chance to talk to all of these different types of people, you gotta have work ethic. You gotta have what? Work ethic. Because someone's gonna do 100 dials a day, someone's gonna do 300 dials a day, and someone's gonna do 20 dials a day. I'm just telling you that you, you have a preconceived notion when you get tired of making dials, and you're like, that's gotta be enough dials to have success. Brad, you know what I'm talking about with people on your team? Yep. You've seen this over the years. Every one of us has a preconceived barometer of what hard is. And so it's like, you have, you have someone from Idaho that will do $250 a day on average. 
And then you'll have some Gen Zer from the big city that's like, oof, it's like my third call. I am working up a sweat. I think we need to take a break. And I'm just playing a little bit. But the point is, every one of you in this room actually has a barometer around what's, what's, what's a lot of vows. Get clear right now. Close your eyes, take a deep breath in, and just ask, what is your number of dials that you're like, that's enough dials for the day? Raise your hand if you know what that number is. It's preconceived. You've decided it. we're just going to shout it all at once. Uh, top of our lungs on the count of three. Here we go. We're going to shout it all together. That number, whatever it is. One, two, three. Okay, whatever that number is, you, your, the amount of money you make is tied first and foremost to your ability to get someone on the phone. So by the way, if you can increase that number by 20%, could that lead to 20% more income, Jason? Yes. So by the way, how many of you want a 20% raise? Could it really just be as simple? Because often the big, the big wins come down to really small things. Here's a small one. Adjust your parameter. So right now, take that number, multiply it by 20%. If you said 100, that new number is 120. If your number was 50, your new number is 70. If your number was 145, make it 185. Take your number, multiply it by 0.2, increase it, and get that new number right now. If you know what your new number is that's 20% higher, raise your hand. Everyone should know that number, that math. What I want you to do is, on the count of three, I want you to shout out that number, but I want you to own it with like excitement, like that's my number, and that's what I hit every single time. One, two, three. One, One two, three. three. Okay, now by the way, if you every day can practice, that's my number, that's my number, that's my number, you're gonna make 20% more money. Because your income is on an X and a Y axis. One axis you have total control over. If you work twice as hard with twice the dials, you make twice the money. Jason, true or false? 100%. Every one of us, now, like that one is just boring and it's true. Twice the calls, twice the money. Which means that if you wanna make a lot more money, you should just what? You should just dial more, right? And all you have to do is get yourself to believe in that. Now, by the way, you do this at the gym. You know what I love about the gym? You know why I think everyone should lift weights? My kids all lift weights. Listen, you can be a basketball player, you can play soccer, you can be a skier, you can do, you can do whatever you want, I don't care. But I think every, every human being should lift weights. Do you know why? There's only one way to become stronger. It's to do more than the last time. That's it, like at the end of the day, if you go to the gym and always lift the same thing, you won't get stronger. You won't. But if you challenge yourself to do more than you've done, so in this game, guess what you wanna do with the make more money easy stupid lever of dial more? You want that number to what? If you could convince yourself that 200 was your norm and that you couldn't end your day without being 200, 200 dials, some of you in this room would make a lot more money. But the reason why we don't do that is because it breaks your threshold of hard work. So dials is all about hard work. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And if I were you, I would just accustomize, I would habituate yourself to 200 or bust. Two, guys, 200 dials, that's unrealistic. That's why it's a great number for you to feel really good about and really comfortable with. Because you have control. For example, the second axis, the X axis, is not about work ethic. It's about what? Starts with a T. Talent. Talent is how good you are at talking to all the different humans that you're going to interface with. Talent. If you don't adjust your talent, if you don't get better at your job, you just do more of it, meaning more dials, there's no exponentiality. So last year I made $48,000. And then I literally increased my dials 110% and then I made $100,000. There's nothing exponential about that. But if you'll challenge yourself to say, how do I talk to this type of person more successfully? Like, and you can't get this thought out of your head. It's a primary question and it plagues you. It plagues you a hundred times throughout the day. And it's like, ah, how do I talk to that person? When I'm talking to a young person with no money, instead of just disqualifying them, what can I do? How can I shift my attitude? How can I shift my tactic? Because there are some people here, by the way, that make $50,000 a year because they can't sell anything big and they can't set. They just close 500 and thousands all day long. This is their bread and butter. And that is a part, that is a, that is a, a, a slice of the pie on the wheel. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's like all day long becoming obsessed. I love being obsessed with good questions. And here's the question. 
how do I talk more successfully to this type of person? Because there are hundreds of types of people and you want to be good at all of them, but most of us are comfortable with only a handful. And we just dial until we get someone in that niche and then we're good. But if you actually try to get good at all conversations, what will happen to talent? Talent will increase, which is why my goal is the day doesn't end until I've asked five of the best people, how do they talk to those five conversations that I had earlier today when I got jammed up? Hey, here's this dude who has all of his money in crypto. He's 30 years old. He doesn't have a job and I couldn't get him. He's waiting for crypto to come back. I couldn't get him to part with any money to develop a second stream of income. By the way, it's a narrow type, but does this type of person exist? Oh, yeah. Yeah. By the way, mm -hmm. or like honestly raise your hand if you're not, like that's not your, your cup of tea. You don't know how to talk to that human being type very successfully. Raise your hand if you feel that way. It's okay to raise your hand, but raise it here. Don't ever raise it like that. Raise it like here. You're in or you're out. You're participating, you're not. If your hand is up, then it's like when you get off that call, I promise you found them once, you're gonna find them again. And if you, don't, if you don't increase your talent, then the next time you're on the phone, you're gonna be hoping and lucking your way through that conversation. Don't do that. Go talk to someone and say, how do you have that conversation? All of a sudden you got three great ideas, you practice it, and then 194 phone calls later, you get the crypto jobless person again. And this time, you have an improved approach. So everyone here can control how hard they work, but the hardest thing to get salespeople to do is to control a pace of massive talent increase by remaining curious, asking questions, and challenging yourself to always get better. These are habits. They're what? Habits. So for example, if I said, my day don't end unless I strive for 200 dials, someone's like, that's crazy. You're bound to get humans on the phone. You'll have four hours of talk time. You can't get there. But if it's your goal to get there no matter what, you're gonna give yourself a raise. Raise your hand if you know that, okay? Number two, talent. Every one of you decides when you know best on how to talk to a human being. Well, I follow the script. I'm talking to this human being and I'm saying robotically the stuff I did the time before. If every phone call is a reincarnation of the previous attempt, your talent is not increasing. Does anyone here know what split testing is? Split test means do everything the same, change one factor, and judge it whether it gave you better odds or lower odds. Every single phone call is an opportunity for you to play a game called better than the call before. No different than the gym, more than the time before because I track it. And so what are you gonna implement differently? I'll tell you when my sales career changed completely. I started messing around with the scary stuff. I decided to go from Scared, monotone, personality-less, talker. And I started messing with things like charisma. Charisma will have you mess with things like stand up and move some energy versus sitting. Charisma will say, speak a little more dramatic. Put a little more pause in there. Use your voice. Own your voice, open your throat, yell at them a little bit. Scold them productively. Congratulate them when appropriate. So you mess with your voice, moduality. Raising my tone, lowering my tone, speaking quiet, speaking loud, speaking with passion, that was scary stuff for me. Today people think I'm a pretty charismatic person. But I promise you, I wasn't born this way. I have people like Brad White in the room or Jason Lawson are like, yeah, I promise you, Crone was not born that way because we remember Crone pre that, true or false, mm -hmm. true, right? So all you're looking is me making choices to increase talent that gives me better odds at meeting an objective. And I'll end with this. What is my objective for you? My objective is for you to make as much money as possible because I know what the products that we offer that will change as many lives as possible. Our, our guys, our success rate and our track record is insane. It's insane. The more money you make, then you're on your five-year plan of having extra cash to set aside to invest with and make really intelligent choices with. Yes. Yes. And that's the goal. 
The goal is for you to work here as long as it suits your needs and is useful for you. And some of us, we're gonna ride long and hard as long as there's time because we know how we're changing the world together. We know how we're leveling everything up. But please, and this is my plea, don't be like everyone else out there that says, well, I got a barometer of how much money I need to make, 50 grand a year, 150 grand a year, 250. And once I get there, I stop learning, I stop growing, and I settle in, I get comfortable, I get satiated. That is the kiss of death. Don't do it. Keep growing, keep pushing. So add one positive habit. You've probably made the decision on what you're going to do, and once you can maintain it, then add another one because your ultimate success is a byproduct of how many positive habits you can maintain. And lastly, pick a new habit for work. And I've given you two ideas. One is alter your barometer on your work ethic because you can give yourself an automatic raise just by getting comfortable spending more talk time. If you're gonna be here in those hours, you might as well be here and rock it because there's people that will work the same amount of hours as you and make four times more money than you. And they're doing that either because they're dialing more when you're chit-chatting or they're increasing talent by constantly remaining curious and asking questions and taking risks on the phone to beast themselves into a more talented human being. I hope you'll figure out some of what you want to do here. Who's getting some inspiration, some ideas on what you want to shift and change? Raise your hand if you're getting some of that. And then specifically raise your hand and share like just one thing that you're taking away from this that you intend to implement starting today. What do you got? Add uh, one positive habit each day, personal and work. Okay, positive work habit, positive personal habit. Love that, awesome. What else? Find a place that I'm plateauing and put more energy to live up. Create awareness on where you're plateauing. An unconscious person just says, that's okay. A conscious person looks for it, shines light on it, and says, how do I grow in that area? Love that. Add more charisma. Yeah, that's a dude, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be who you've never been is, what, is the biggest thing I, I would say, especially if those of you that are brand new starting. Is like, and even if you're not new, you're like, well, I've been here four months. Don't be afraid to try out a more, a, a greater expression of who you are as a human being. I promise, I promise how you express today is not the ultimate. I promise that who you are in your entire life up to this moment is not all you got to give, which means there's more, and there's something more meaningful, and I invite you to figure that out. Let's just get one more. Who else got one? Go ahead. Uh, pre-9 a.m. schedule. Pre-9 a.m., what are you gonna do, Joe? Yeah. Work out, invest in my wife, and invest in myself. All three of us. Guys, give it up for Joe and for yourself, guys. <laughs> it's the kickoff of the new year. Woo! If there was a time to freaking take on some amazing new habits and level things up, today's as great a day of anyone. I appreciate you guys. Let's crush it this week. Thank you. Yeah.